Hello my lovely people, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Brooke and I give advice basically on life, life stuff that I've at least learned in the past 22 years. So yeah, <laughs> um, as you guys can see, I have not posted in a week and a half. I said I was going to be consistent, but unfortunately things happened. Fortunately, it was a great thing that happened. I was filming an indie film for, um, I was out in Atlanta for about two weeks. Now let me just say, I did attempt to film this video, but the lighting and the background, it just was not doing it for me. So yeah, quality, 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 quality matters to me, especially when I'm doing YouTube. So um, I wanted to do it better. I wanted to come back better and do it 10 times better. Obviously, as you can see by the title, the title is How to Stop Attracting Rusty, Dusty, Crusty, Lusty Boys, okay? Because it is 2024. Like, we're not doing this anymore, okay? I know y'all have dealt with at least one or two, several, like, we've all probably done it. But now it's time to stop because we've learned. We're learning as we go. And we're trying to be healthy and healed and take back our power if you've ever been in situations like that. I was telling my therapist the other day because he was like asking me about like past stuff and I know this man was shaking his damn head, like in his head. Like he wasn't doing it on camera, but he was definitely shaking his head in his head. Yeah. I, I, I was embarrassed too. Like I was embarrassed even just telling the story. But he asked me and that's why like I literally was explaining to him like, I'm okay now. Like I've learned my lesson now. <laughs> But yeah, let's get into the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. This is probably the most obvious step, but it is the most important one. And I think this applies to literally like every factor of your life because I feel like you can't really contribute to whether that's work, whether that's school, whether that's relationships, whether that's family, friendships, all that stuff. You can't really contribute to it without love self-love because self-love is confidence and like if you don't believe you can get an A in this class then how, how, how do you think you won't get an A? How do you think you won't get an A? If you don't think you can make this amount of sales by I don't know the end of the week how do you it's all confidence you have to say you know what I can and I will same as for relationships if you don't love yourself, you are probably going to accept everything that, you know, people offer you, both negative and positive. And you have to know when someone is treating you like shit. You have to be able to like see when someone or just understand and notice when someone is treating you like shit. And the way that you notice that is when you actually love yourself. Because if you feel that this person is bringing you more anxiety than peace, and it's not contributing to your self-love, a person that is a man is going to honestly help you love yourself even more. They're gonna to contribute to that. I think of like a man as an addition to my life. He is not the whole equation, because maybe I am. He's just an addition, okay? And you know, if he, if he Fs up, then he can be subtracted, okay? So, at the end of the day, you are the prize. You have to know that you are the prize. You have to understand that a lot of boys can pick on, like pick up on when you don't love yourself because of the way that you accept things. If you accept a, a boy that's going to text you every two weeks, three weeks, if he only texts you at nighttime, if he only texts you when it's convenient for him and you accept that, then he's gonna think that you're stupid because you just keep on accepting and not saying anything. And if you just believe him when he says, oh, it's because I'm busy. If you just... You believe him, you know, when he says he's busy, that's why he hasn't texted back, that's why he yada, yada, yada. Again, that's just an excuse guys use when they don't wanna text you. Because at the end of the day, you know a man would, you know first of all that it takes two seconds to text somebody. It takes like two seconds. Watch, look, wait. I'm up on my timer. 
And I'm not even gonna time her, I'm just gonna count myself. H I, that was two milliseconds high. And you're telling me that he doesn't care enough about you to take one minute out his day to text you that he can't, he's that busy? Ooh. No, 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 no. He does not like you enough. And sometimes when you love yourself enough, you realize that that is okay. That does not mean that you are not enough because he doesn't text you, because he doesn't put an effort for a date, all those things. That does not mean that just because he doesn't like you enough does not mean that you're not enough. It means he's not enough. He doesn't see your worth. He's probably blind, clearly. Like, he can't, I can't see, I'm blind. Like, he cannot see you. He cannot see how great you are. But when you see how great you are, sometimes that doesn't even make other people see how great you are. Sometimes it attempts people when they, when they see how great you are. There was a time I told someone, like, that I'm, like, I'm beautiful. Like, I'm smart. I was really just, I wasn't being conceited or anything, but I was just really loving on myself and i'm like no i'm beautiful i'm smart and this and this and that and he said that i was pretentious and i'm like that's not being pretentious it's me loving myself because if i said i was ugly if i said i was dumb what would be the response so you have to understand that some people are unfortunately like they just don't understand what loving themselves mean and a lot of boys don't love themselves but you have to love yourself to know that to know how to be treated as well. If you ever need a tip on whether or not that man is really busy, because no one's busy, no one's that busy. No one's that busy, okay? When you're with him, when the, the one time he texts you in a blue moon, this is the situation tip. Is he on his phone? Ooh, is he on his phone? Oh, okay. So if he took those five minutes to be on his phone, you know that he doesn't live like a caveman after all. Like <laughs> he just doesn't prioritize taking seconds, minutes, and you know, to, to talk to you and also prevent having your mind wander. Cause we're emotional creatures. Like if a man doesn't text us, you know, it's either like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? Or it's simply like, you're done. You don't text me for, you know, this amount of times, whatever. But when you love yourself, you honestly do attract others that love themselves as well. You know, someone that loves themselves is not going to like accept any kind of behavior that just makes them overthink and makes them feel like crap. Like that's just not gonna happen. Like, Cause you ain't, you know, you could either tolerate me at my crib or you could tolerate, ooh, I'll pick you up whenever you would like. Um, I set reservations at so-and-so at this location um dress so and so i will you know i i'll see you soon like that's it's either or which type of girl are you which one will you accept if someone says i'm gonna try the crib are you gonna say okay just because you want them to get them to like you or is it like oh like i really am being treated like a queen let me you know why would i meet you at your crib on the first date like, that's crazy. So, if you accept Meet Me at My Crib, then he's gonna treat you like a Meet Me at My Crib girl. Unless that's what you wanna be, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying, if you wanna stop attracting dusty, rusty, crusty, lusty boys, the crib is just not the option. That's just not what we're doing. No, that's not a date. You deserve to be taken out. It doesn't have to be at a restaurant. It could be for ice cream, it could be a picnic. It could be paintballing, I don't know, it could be going to church it could be roller skating it could be anything it could be anything but being at the crib is crazy like what are we doing why do we need to be at the crib we can do it we could talk outside why we, why we, gotta, why we gotta talk on the crib like because we know what the crib means we know why you want to go to the crib but i is simply like no i'm good if a man ever told me meet him at his crib on the first date i wouldn't even show up or respond at all like i would just be like okay um we are not on the same page and that is okay hasta luego um the next one is simply stop looking for love like i think that's the best way to attract um 
to attract a good man is to stop looking for one. Like, it will come to you. But when you start really working on yourself and you least expect it is when a man comes into your life. I have a little story. So basically, um, when I had gotten out of a relationship, I was down bad, but I was so ready to be single and I was so ready to work on myself because I just needed the break. I needed the break from feeling heartbreak. And I felt so good to just be at peace and not have to worry about whether or not someone's hurting me every five seconds. It felt good for the overthinking to stop about everything. So what that really motivated me to just find the beauty in being single. And there is beauty in being single. A lot of people want relationships, but they don't realize how much time it takes, how much effort it takes, how much self-love it takes. It's not easy. So when you're in your single season, you have to shower yourself with that love. I thought it, I think I read like or watched something like they're basically saying like, enjoy your single season because one day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna wake up next to this person, you know, every day you're not gonna have the same amount of like solitude, you know? Like I love being alone and that's because I spend a lot of time alone. But when you're living with somebody and you know da 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 da, you're not gonna have the same amount of time that you did when you were single that you do when you're in a relationship. And then you're probably wondering like, why would I want all that time alone? I love spending time with myself. As much as I love spending time with my boyfriend, I love spending time with myself because I get to learn so much about myself when it's just quiet, it's just me in my own space, you know? So, you know, after like realizing that, I spent a lot of time on myself, probably for like six months. I was strictly just working on myself, but I went on a lot of solo dates and I enjoyed myself. Like, I'm just like, I'm having so much fun. Like, I don't need a guy to be with me. I don't need to have someone with me all the time. I went to, you know, I read, I read a lot of books. I learned a lot about myself. I spent a lot of time at the beach. I'm like, wow, I really love the fucking beach. Like, I just learned so much about myself every single day that didn't revolve around a man. And I was trying to become a better person for myself and, you know, my future person as well. Um, also for the people that are going to enter my life regardless like i'm just thinking this is a time where i need to sit in my own space and just be grateful for what i have because you know whatever didn't work out for me it was protecting me and whenever the person does come i just can't wait to meet them but in the meantime i'm going to i'm going to love love up on myself as i will continue doing that for the rest of my life that is a promise i made to myself and it's easier said than done. You have to really do the work and a lot of deep, like, self-work um, within. But six months later, I met my boyfriend. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I literally kept on just saying I'm not looking for anything serious. And then something happened. And now, like, I attracted a good man. You know, not a, not a dusty boy. <laughs> so it's just things like that there's no manual to it it's strictly just like you gotta understand you know who you want to be and who you want in your life where do you see what do you see what kind of person do you see yourself with um so yeah focus on yourself a lot of times like i feel like a lot of times people that look for a man everywhere they go it kind of screams like pick me pick me like desperation and men don't like that man a man admires a woman then that can hold her own and still be open to you know having someone provide for her um an independent woman a real woman that knows who she is a real woman that knows her worth men listen to boys and men listen to you when you speak they can tell if you're insecure or you're secure within yourself. Um, a boy will be intimidated when you are secure within yourself. A man will find that the most beautiful thing in the world, okay? Because then once they know you know your worth, then they will know your worth because they see you. Boys don't see you. They play you instead. So, 
yeah, it's kind of like a woman that knows she's surprised will say, what do you have to offer me? You know? Um, so yeah, what do you have to offer me? Cause I know, I know what I bring to the table. What, you know? Um, and honestly, it's just really just having faith. Like, do you have faith? Cause I have faith. Like God will have you meet your husband. I promise you, your boyfriend, your husband, whatever, you know, you're looking for. And the one thing I will say is God will send you the wrong one to convince you why you need to get your shit together for the right one. Let me repeat that. God will send you the wrong one to convince you why you need to get your shit together for the right one. Um, yeah, that's definitely a point. Going back to what I said about how men can um, like kind of just dissect on whether or not you love yourself. It's not just the way you speak about yourself, it's the way you act. It's the way you act. It's the way you dress. It's the way you just do buy what you allow. Like there's so many ways that a man can, you know, determine whether or not you love yourself. Like this is the final result. This is a girl that don't love herself. This is a girl that always comes back. This is a girl that um that allows me to control her. This is the girl that just like, you know, there's so many ways that boys can determine things. Um a real woman that loves herself does not even entertain a boy that does not love himself and that's what i that's what i said that's what i said okay um the next thing is make a list of your like ideal boyfriend like who like what are the boxes that these people need to check now let me just make this very abundantly clear there is no one that is going to be perfect for you we all want like you know but no one's gonna be perfect they could be the most handsome they could be a 10 on the outside but a five on the inside a two on the inside they could be a five on the outside but a 10 on the inside so i'm not saying they have to check all your boxes because most of the time they will not they will not but list your non-negotiables. What is something I'm not going to allow? Is it something that I allowed in the past relationship and it broke me? I don't want to deal with that shit ever again. So what am I not allowing this time? Some green flags are like, you know, a man that has a good relationship with his family. Okay. Not, not no daddy issues, not no mama issues, like type shit. Um, they're communicative. They're funny. They're respectful. Um, they have goals. They have a good job. They're emotionally available they are affectionate they're mannerable they're loyal those are some really good green flags that you want to look out for now some red flags don't ignore them please not ignore them a lot of times the reason why we end up with dusty bust rusty busty boys is because we end up ignoring the first red flag we're like oh it's okay and then we see it again oh it's okay and we say oh it's okay and now it's in too deep it's too long and it's too long that point we can't even get out because we have too much history now so trust issues a man that has trust issues will always think you probably cheating on them even though you just sitting at home fucking watching spongebob the last airbender they're like are you cheating on me yada 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 and they'll blame you with their delusions and yada 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 and you didn't even do shit you wouldn't even do shit whatever a gaslighter a narcissist mm -mm -mm -mm. anger issues someone that has anger issues someone that's controlling someone that is a liar a love bomber um someone that doesn't want a relationship and just a situationship make sure you communicate as to like what you want what do you want it's not about a lot of times we ask people like so what are you looking for you tell them what the fuck you looking for why is why is the cards all in their like on why is it all in their hands like why can't you just say like what you're looking for like i'm looking for a relationship like i'm being transparent but we always leave it up to the guy like oh like what are you looking for if they are not on the same page with you as what they're looking for let's say i want a relationship and they want a situation then you leave because a lot of times we think that we're going to change their mind. Oh, maybe like he's going to want one eventually. No, it's, he's not. He's really not. Like those are the worst ones to be dealing with anyways. Um, 
so yeah another red flag is texting at night there are so many red flags but at the end of the day you could also have someone that is funny um and they may not be um as you know they may not be tall too tall i don't know um and these are really more as like internal like factors not really um external um but one thing i've realized is a lot of people like to go towards their type and their type is usually the ones that hurt them the most um yes we love a good you know someone that's over six foot someone that is just fine as mine but sometimes it's okay to go out your type one thing i heard is that you probably won't even end up marrying your type so be open like me i don't even have a type <laughs> i ain't got no type i just i i like it all so but be open and that leads up to my next point which is simply just being open to whatever comes your way don't dismiss it because they don't look your type a lot of times people will turn down a really great guy because they're not the guy that they had envisioned in their head of who they'd marry because they don't look like michael b jordan or chris evans like miss ma'am you got a great man in front of you this man's willing to treat you right dine and wine hunt and dine all this stuff with you he's, he's willing to take you out take you to you know he's willing to treat you like a queen and you ghost him because he's not your type that's crazy um but i'm just saying like when i say be open i mean just don't take it so seriously when you're dating when you're trying to figure out what you want just see where it goes you do not know you do not know what's going to happen just give it a try because god sent you that man for a reason either to teach you something or to i don't know do something but just be open you never know what you'll be surprised with is what i'm trying to say okay um so yeah that was majority of my tips i hope you guys will continue to attract some nice you know men that you deserve okay because everyone deserves a nice great man um and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys in the next one